is not clear. Please uh, close your microphone and speak. While he's doing that, I want to let you know we're going live on Facebook right now. Five, four, three. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Let everything that has breath Praise ye the Lord. Today we are excited. We are excited. We are excited. I'm not going to start off this morning session. I'm going to call, hallelujah, this mighty woman of God, this powerful woman of God, hallelujah, to come and bring greetings none other than prophetess, sister, Shaleva Kali, the mighty woman of God, and my darling wife. She's going to open up today's resurrection service today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are here to rejoice. We are here to celebrate the goodness of God, a uh, uh, perfect, wonderful faith, everything that the Lord has done. I want to welcome all of you to our service this morning. From wherever you are tuning in from, we want to say, God bless you. Us here at Cami, we love you. Uh, we are praying for you, especially those who are uh, who connect with us um, often to let us know that you're a day of watching. We just pray for the body of Christ by all means and, and all the times. God bless all of you in Jesus' name. We want to welcome everyone who is joining us on this platform. All of our uh, past, apostles, pastors, teachers, evangelists, uh, prophets, all of you bishops, uh, ministers, workers in the vineyard, and all of your respective places. And of course, we welcome the power Amen. of the Amen. Holy Spirit. I can already feel it moving and doing a wonderful thing this morning. And I greet you all on behalf of Apostle Polly and I. We just want to say as Lord's servants, uh, it is truly a privilege to serve you. It is truly a Hallelujah. privilege to pray and to petition and to stand with you in all things of God and also to seek prospering in the things of God. And so as we move on in our worship service uh, this morning, glory be to the name of the Lord. I would like to have, I see, I would like to ask Apostle Abraham to just uh, pray for us now uh, for world salvation. We're going to uh, just do a few series of prayers before we move on in the service this morning. Apostle Abraham, can you kind of just begin by praying for world salvation as we celebrate this resurrection uh, day 2021. Apostle Abraham, take it away. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, uh, Mama. And God bless you richly. Um, thank you. As we are praying, the Bible says in the first book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse number 4, it says, uh, God likes or would like everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. So as I'm going to pray, we're praying for salvation of the whole world, which is our mandate in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Father, I pray even this evening in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, for the salvation of all men, all women, the great, the small, the learned and unlearned. Heavenly Father, I pray for the salvation of the rich and the poor. I pray for all people all around the world that they must be saved, they must receive the, the, the grace of salvation uh, through the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I cut every stronghold, every, every string that is tough 
tied people from being from receiving the gospel in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that Heavenly Father, Lord, those who are in uh, USA, those who are in Bahamas, Lord, those who are in all Africa, in Asia, in India, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the salvation of all people, black and white, uh, Indian and colored, uh, great and small, in the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, you said in your way, you want all people to be saved. And Lord, also give us the grace as we are ministering your way everywhere. Let people, Lord, people's heart be uh, ready and prepared to receive the message of the kingdom in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Bless Heavenly Father, each and everyone who is committed to taking the message of the kingdom to all nations in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray I give you all the glory, the honor, I give you the praise and the adoration in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Father, we thank you as we are going to also hear the message. Let the message, Lord, detach our lives and also enable the atmosphere, Heavenly Father, for people, Lord, to receive the message of, of salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Father, you are God Almighty. You are God Omnipresent. There is no one else like you. Father, you have appointed this day, the Heavenly Father, as you are gathered all over this world, the world, through uh, Kami Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International. Heavenly Father, we know that Lord, you have prepared this vehicle to take the message of the kingdom to all the nations in Jesus Christ's mighty name. And we are committed, Heavenly Father, to unite the body of Jesus Christ. We are committed, Lord, to, uh, to preach the message of reconciliation to all people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, my Redeemer. And raise evangelists, and raise apostles, raise prophets, raise teachers and pastors. Lord, those who are going to be filled with the, with the passion, Heavenly Father, and compassion for soul winning. For your word says, oh God, those who win souls are wise. Heavenly Father, raise people, Lord, who are going to be on fire for the gospel in Jesus Christ's mighty name. I give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Father, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, bless the Lord this morning. Come on, praise the Lord this morning. We're going to swing it. Thank you for that, Apostle Abraham. We're going to swing it over to Apostle Love from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, please come on and bring prayers and greetings. Bring for, hallelujah, resurrection power for the nations and those who are watching. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank Amen. you, Papa. Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to greet, I want to greet all the nations uh, in, 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 this, in this platform, uh, in this page, uh, I see uh, Apostle Jacob, I see Apostle Bethesda. I see um, Nayaki, uh, I see Samuel Kaki. Uh, greetings in the name of Jesus. We come in family, we're here to bless uh, the name of the Lord and celebrate the resurrection of our King and Lord Jesus the Christ, the Deliverer, the Messiah, one who was wait, whom we waited for, uh, who came into this planet Earth, who saved us, who delivered, who died on the cross, rose on the third day, ascended into heaven. I greet Apostle Andrew Mataga, uh, our African director, uh, Mama, our administrator, Mama Shal Kole, and also uh, our doctor, Apostle uh, Khalifa Kole. Uh, I see there, there is a uh, uh, Renjet, uh, Paul, and also um, all the nations uh, that are, 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 are part of this family, uh, uh, Kami family. We, we bless you guys. 
We bless you. May the Lord continue to bless you, strengthen you, empower you, uh, give you the power, open uh, the eyes of your understanding that you may see uh, the need that is out there, that we may reach out to the nations and preach the gospel and the gospel of Jesus Christ, the message of the crossing. Paul says uh, uh, this gospel, this message of the crossing is foolishness to those who are perishing, but it is the power of God unto salvation to us who are being saved. May God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, praise the Lord. Thank you for that. Son, greetings in Jesus' name. I want to turn it over to Jacob Chaco. Hallelujah. Jacob, are you ready to? Hallelujah. Bring prayers. And Apostle Jacob will be praying for those sick, those who are sick and shut in. Those who are sick and shut in around the world watching live. Hold on, Apostle Jacob is praying. Are you there? Fix your mic. Hallelujah. Yes, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you get me? Yes, we can hear you now. Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise God. I'd like to greet each and everyone. I thank for the privileges God has given for me to, to be a part of this uh, ongoing celebration of the resurrection because our Lord is living for us. None can be hold hands. The top cannot hold him. He's a resurrection. He's a living for us. His time for up. It's hallelujah. He's the king of kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. I thank for this a wonderful time. I like to pray for the salvation of the people of the nations. Hallelujah. Our loving Heavenly Father. We thanks and praise for this a wonderful time that we, the like, people are gathered, the apostle and prophet and pastors of the Kami International Business Ministry is gathering together to pray and plead and intercede for the, the nation, nation of the world. So thank you, Lord, you send your son. Thank you, Lord, you send your son to save the humanity, Lord. Thank you, Lord, you, send, you give his life on the cross of Calvary to save the people of the nation. Hallelujah. The Lord, now that Jesus has a finished, it's a work of the redemption on the cross because of the resurrection of the Jesus Christ. The Lord, I pray for each and every people who are living in the nation across the world, Lord. The Lord, the touch them, Lord. The Lord, these days you talk to them, Lord. Let the Spirit of the Lord is talking to each one of hearts and let they come to the Lord. Hallelujah. Let people come to the, I pray for the people of the nation, especially in the Africans and the European and the Americans and the Asian and Indians, every tribes and every tanks. And let them come forward and get the knowledge of salvation. Let be a part of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So moving across the nation, you're moving across the nation. Hallelujah, the touching the people and transforming. Hallelujah, the people with the power of the resurrection. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Once again, we pray for the, all people. Uh, we, uh, we hand over each and every matter in your hands. We ask everything, the most gracious, the wonderful name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thanks, God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Praise, Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. the name. Biswat, are you there? Biswat, are you there? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship, we worship, we worship. We give we glory worship and glory. The Lord. The Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you all so much. Amen. For the wonderful prayer Praise now, God, Father. God, in the God, mighty God, name God, of God. Jesus, we just dedicate today's service unto you, Lord God. We bind and rebuke every attack from the enemy over the airways in the mighty name of Jesus and from the people of God who are watching 
In Jesus' mighty name, Lord God, let your fire, Lord God, go before us and surround us in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare that any uh, evil attack, Lord God, from the enemy malfunction and backfire in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Now, Father, we declare this place and every place that is watching and that's connecting to this broadcast, Lord God, to be a glory around, Lord God, where the spirit of the Lord is represented, is honored, and is revered. Hallelujah. As we lift up the name of Jesus, and as we give God thanks for his wonderful gift, the comforter, the Holy Spirit, and the power of God, we cover everyone attached to this service now. Hallelujah. With the blood of Jesus. Father, have your way now. Let it be none, let there be none of us and all of you as we come together, hallelujah, in unity and as one in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Glory be to the name of the Lord again. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you and welcome to all of you in your respect, your respective places. I just want to begin by reading our scripture passage for this morning. And our scripture passage is taken from the book of Philippians. And we are reading from, hallelujah, chapter 3, from verse 7 to 11. And it reads as follows. But what things were gained to me, those that I counted lost for Christ? Yea, doubtless, and I counted all things but loss. For the excellence of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do not count them but dumb, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, <clears throat> that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection, hallelujah, of the dead, for emphasis, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death, hallelujah, somebody type resurrection, Somebody go ahead, hallelujah, and type resurrection. resurrection. Glory resurrection. be to the name of the Lord who is excited today about resurrection. As we have declared, people of God, from a few weeks ago, hallelujah, that this is going to be a prophetic service. I want you to stay tuned, hallelujah. I want your spirit to be ready. I want you to be transformed and conformed by what the Lord is saying and doing. Hallelujah. It is not about us anymore. It is just all about Christ. And this is a wonderful time all over the world as we take this time out and consecrate ourselves and reflect on what Christ has done, especially to those who can do it freely. I can tell you that in many countries, people of God, that the body of Christ who usually would come together to fellowship on this day, they cannot fellowship. Hallelujah. But the word of God says that there will come a time when you will worship me in spirit and in truth. And so I want to declare that all the worshipers stand up. Hallelujah. This morning, from wherever you are, from the southern tip of Africa, hallelujah, hallelujah, to the northern tip, hallelujah, of the UK, hallelujah, to the western tip, hallelujah, of South America, wherever you are down to Australia, the Maldives, wherever, Jamaica. I want you to stand and worship your Lord and Savior in spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah and in truth. Because no matter what man does, because so much can happen without the consequences of man, but it doesn't matter what they do. Christ in you is the hope of all glory. And once you have Christ in you, hallelujah, you can just open your mouth and that will be praise, hallelujah, unto God. You can pick up the phone, watch up for so many, hallelujah, apps that are free. You can just get them and put it all out and that will be praise, hallelujah, once again, and the presence of the Lord, hallelujah, just touch it, hallelujah, apps that are hallelujah, with me, that Jesus is Lord, and that his kingdom, glory be to the name of the Lord, will come into the earth today. 
In Jesus' name, amen. I want to encourage those of you to just put your thumb on you that there is a feedback. We pray together. Hallelujah. We praise. We praise. We give a glory and honor to the Lord. We thanks, Lord. We thanks. We thanks, Lord. Thanks, 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 Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We praise. 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 Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The cross of Jesus, Jesus Christ is central to the, the Christian name of faith. Jesus. The, name the cross of Jesus. reveals to us the character Amen. of Thank God. Hallelujah. Are we good in prayer? His love for lost sinners and his perfect justice met at the cross. The cross is the place where all the wounds of sin Ooh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give a glory and honor to the Lord. We give a glory to the Lord. The name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, we bless each and every one. We bless, we bless the people of the nation. We bless. I can let your power is moving. Thank you, Jesus. 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 We give a glory and honor to the Lord. The Lord, we ask you to give a glory because you are the reason, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you all. Hallelujah today. Hallelujah. So we're talking about the cross. Hallelujah. We're talking about the cross of Jesus. And like I said, hallelujah, for those of you who perhaps didn't hear me, I just want to encourage you that a Christ in you is the hope of all glory this morning. So wherever you are, wherever your geographic location is, especially for those who are shut in, uh, on today, you cannot fellowship uh, together as the body of Christ. Uh, rest assured and give God praise in the fact, hallelujah, that you have so many apps that you can, and even the telephone, just call your brother and sister and just touch it and say, agree with me this morning that Jesus is Lord and that his kingdom come on earth as it is, hallelujah, in heaven. And so before apostle comes, Hallelujah, while we are sorting things out, mm -hmm. I want to talk about the cross. Amen. And so I'll just start over. The cross from 1 Peter 2, 24 to 25. The cross of Christ is central to the Christian faith. The cross reveals to us the character of God. <clears throat> that is his love for lost sinners and his perfect justice which met at the cross. The cross is the place where all the wounds of sin are healed. Emotional problems such as guilt, anxiety, depression, anger, or whatever. There is healing in the cross of Christ. You are going through, if you are going through tragedy or suffering, there is comfort in abundance this morning as you contemplate the suffering of the spotless Savior. Hallelujah on our behalf. And this is why we celebrate him, hallelujah, on this resurrection day. People of God keeping the cross, hallelujah, the cross of Christ central, hallelujah, to your hearts and to your mind. It protects you from the many winds of false doctrine, hallelujah, which blows in every day. Because believe you me, they are so much, hallelujah, false doctrine. We can just, hallelujah, agree. Glory be to the name of the Lord, just to preach Christ, hallelujah, and him crucified. Now, many do this for all sorts of reasons, for gain, hallelujah, for fame, 
whatever it is. But as the word of God says that Christ is preached, but hallelujah, I just want to say that it be my wish, hallelujah, my will for Christ to be preached, hallelujah, that man be transformed, that the power of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, which Christ, hallelujah, has given us through his resurrection, hallelujah, be met in the hearts of men and be, hallelujah, be utilized as it is supposed to because of what God met, hallelujah, because of what God left and what he did when he met all of his disciples. And so Satan hates the cross. Do you know why Satan hates the cross? Hallelujah. It is because it seals his doom and he is relentless in his attack to undermine and toward, hallelujah, the cross. You see, people of God, when men, hallelujah, man listen to Satan and they were banished from the Garden of Eden and from the presence of God, the word of God, <clears throat> hallelujah, is still the same. The wages of sin is dead. They sinned against God. They were disobedient. They were operating in witchcraft, very much like what Satan does and continues to do, operate in witchcraft, in rebellion against God. So he knows, he knows that his faith is sealed. Amen. And so this is why he does everything to you and I to bombard us and combat everything that we do in the kingdom of God so that we can meet the same faith as him. Amen. Because hell, as the Bible says, was prepared for Satan and his angels. But because, hallelujah, he is such a relentless uh, thief, because he is such a relentless uh, disappointment, because he is such a relentless power seeking hallelujah, and whoremonger and perverted uh, being, hallelujah. He wants everyone else to come along with him. And those, hallelujah, who would otherwise have the Holy Spirit and those who don't, he try to get his evil and wicked spirits, hallelujah, to uh, overtake them so that they can sin and go, hallelujah, to the place that was prepared for him. And so through Christ's death on the cross, those who turn to him are delivered from both the penalty of sin and the power of sin. Let us discuss that for a brief moment. Through Christ's death on the cross, those who turn to him are delivered from the penalty of sin. How do we know this? This is clearly the meaning of the words. Hallelujah. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree by using the word tree rather than cross. Apostle Peter, no doubt, had in his mind the book of Deuteronomy 21, 22, and 23, where it prescribed the penalty for a condemned criminal that his body be hanged on a tree. For who, for he who is hanged, hallelujah, is a curse of God, the word of God says. The Apostle Paul refers to the same text in Galatians 3 and 13, where he says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Both apostles here, people of God, are saying that Christ took on himself as a substitute, the condemnation, hallelujah, which we ourselves deserve. The holiness and justice of God demand that a penalty be paid Christ took that penalty on himself on the cross by mentioning Christ's body. Apostle Peter here, he calls attention to the fact that though Christ, hallelujah, he is God, he will forever, hallelujah, he was forever God, he is God, and he will forever be God. But even in his, in his state as a human, in this state of humanity, being God, hallelujah, glory be to the name of the Lord, since the human race sin, now listen to this, a member of the race had to pay the just penalty that God demands, amen? But only one who was sinless himself could pay such a penalty, since others would have to pay for their own sin. And so Jesus Christ, who alone among the human race committed no sin, is the only one capable of bearing the sins of human race. 
And I say he's the only one capable because he is still, hallelujah, that what he did over 2,000 years, hallelujah, ago, it was still for the sins, hallelujah, of you and I and for those who would sin, hallelujah, later on today, tomorrow, next week, next year, should the Lord tarry, amen. And so this bearing of sin was a legal transaction in which God the Father transferred to God the Son the penalty that we ourselves deserve. And so Jesus Christ bore your sin, hallelujah, on the cross. But you must take him up on the offer, not just talking about resurrection and just naming him as Christ and calling on his name when you need things, hallelujah. But you must take him up by making him, hallelujah, making him your Lord and your Savior. And so if you turn to him, you will be delivered from the penalty of sin, which God justly, hallelujah, must impose because he is a just God, hallelujah. And so that's what Peter means, hallelujah, when he said, he himself bore our sins, hallelujah, in his body on the cross. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Through Christ's death on the cross, those who turn to him are delivered from the power of sin. The cross, hallelujah, is a great contradiction. Hallelujah. You know why? It is great, but it is also marvelous and wonderful. Do you know why? Simply put, the cross is an upright post, as we know, with transverse bars used in crucifixion. Amen? A symbol of death, but it is so much more, people of God. Hallelujah. Death and life hate and love, hallelujah, violence and peace, accusation, hallelujah, and forgiveness, sin and purity, brokenness and wholeness, all is lost, yet everything is gained, hallelujah, through the cross, destruction and restoration, hallelujah, happens because of the cross, defeat and victory, hallelujah, many can claim through the cross, once the cruelest form of execution, yet it is now a symbol of abundant life. Somebody type glory. Hallelujah. The cross means so many things, hallelujah, to many people. But some, hallelujah, they have it displayed on their mantle. Others wear it or wear it around their neck. But hallelujah, because of this day, because of this powerful resurrection of our lord and savior who was seen by so many who talk and met hallelujah with his disciples we are here today and we can uh, celebrate this triumphant victory many of us hallelujah who were broken who suffered all kind of accusation because hallelujah we are in christ we have been forgiven glory be to the name of the lord many of us who led a life of sin and still may be struggling in sin because hallelujah, we are continuing to walk and to press toward the mark of Christ. We're continuing on the journey to be holy. Hallelujah, because Christ himself is holy and the scripture admonishes us to be holy. And because of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, many struggle with surrendering to the Holy Spirit to have that power to overcome sin. But because of this cross, because of this resurrection day, glory be to the name of the Lord, we can stand and celebrate and say that there is hope. And so people of God, as we get ready for a person that comes today, hallelujah, because of this wonderful day, somebody shout and type resurrection power. Because of resurrection power, hallelujah, the cross means love. Christ died for sinners. He died for people who had lost their way. He died for people who still believe, hallelujah, that their own way is right and who are slipping, hallelujah, away. He died, hallelujah. He did not die because it was forced upon him, but it was a choice. It was a choice made in love. Glory be to the name of the Lord. But God shows his, showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners, according to the book of Romans 5 and 8. Jesus still loves sinners. And so you and I as people of God, 
hallelujah, who confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior, you and I who are ministers of the gospel's workers in the vineyard, we too ought to love sinners, not in a way, hallelujah, where we just uh, leave them alone. Yes, uh, some the Lord have uh, placed over to a reprobate mind and some even then and now the apostles have turned them over, hallelujah, to the tormentors. But nonetheless, we ought to love them and love them in a way that they are to even consider because we know some, hallelujah, will not want to go on the straight and narrow way. Some will just decide to go, hallelujah, on the broader way. But we ought to love them that they would even consider, hallelujah, they would even consider Christ and consider this right way. And not only that, because of resurrection power again, uh, that same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead and living you and I, when we do our work, hallelujah, for Christ, and we come into contact with sinners, hallelujah, because of Christ in us and because there is hope of glory, darkness, hallelujah, should flee from the heart and mind of that sinner, and they should accept love, hallelujah, because of you, the ambassador representing Christ and his kingdom. They shall want to cross over, hallelujah, to this kingdom. And so, people of God, because of the resurrection, the cross is personal, hallelujah. In most religion, as we know, people strive, hallelujah, to reach their deity or their God. But Christianity is the only faith, hallelujah, where God has reached down to us, amen. Our response to such a God is to know him personally. Amen. Jesus died so that he could know, hallelujah, you. And it is also for you to know him. Jesus, hallelujah, what he did on the cross was personal. And so for a moment, I just want to talk to those, hallelujah, who have not made Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior as yet. Hallelujah. You know, Christians, hallelujah, we love the body of Christ, hallelujah. Many have already decided they have a ministry that they attend. They have a ministry they're going to be faithful to. God bless you and we love you. Be yes, be faithful to the ministry. Be faithful, hallelujah, to the servant of God, the chief servant of that house. Glory be to the name of the Lord. But hallelujah, join in with us. Hallelujah, in doing the work so that others would be saved. Hallelujah, and so for the sinner, hallelujah. This morning, you may feel like sinner is such a condescending or condemning word, hallelujah, but in order to be transformed and to be saved, we have to accept our fault. We have to accept and examine ourselves and think and realize the things that so easily beset us. These things cause us to feel ashamed. These things cause us to feel condemned. They, these things cause us to condemn ourselves. These things cause others to condemn us. These things cause us to look down on ourselves, having low self-esteem. These things cause others, hallelujah, to hold a, a, a banner, I should say, hallelujah, for lack of a better word, or a mantle of oppression and suppression over us, which causes us to be hallelujah depressed all of it is because of sin that's why apostle paul made mention hallelujah in that in first peter as i mentioned before i didn't go into the passage but he talks about slave these things hallelujah make us slaves when we are suppressed hallelujah we are slaves when others suppress and and, and try to depress hallelujah and oppress us we are slaves when our minds, hallelujah, oppresses and suppress our thinking that all we think is that we are nothing instead of uh, thinking that we are something. All of it, hallelujah, is because of sin. And so I want to encourage you today that if nothing else happened through this service, hallelujah, be ready and prepared, hallelujah, that your life and your mind is changed. And you will at least decide to give Jesus Christ a chance. And others, I just encourage you just to pray, hallelujah, with me. It's not always these messages and every message that is spoken on behalf of Christ and the kingdom. It is not always, hallelujah, to those who are already Christians and, and, taught and already confessed to being believers. 
We have to realize that there is a whole world out there of those who are lost, souls who are lost. So if you want to get offended by teaching and preaching sin and the, the preaching and teaching of sin, then by all means, just move on. Hallelujah. Just go away. You don't hear of sin since you are already perfect and you don't need to hear sin every day. They are those, hallelujah, who are down, who need to come up and we still have to do our part and find our place. Glory be to the name of the Lord. And so what Christ did for you, hallelujah, that one who is watching me this morning, it was personal. It was for you to be his friend. It was for you to be not even only his friend, but for you to be a son, hallelujah, of God. It was for you to receive his Holy Spirit. Many talk about Christ and receiving Christ, but there is more, hallelujah. You also have to, yes, the Holy Spirit indwells you, but you also have to be led by the Spirit to be the Son of God. The Word of God also tells us that the Holy Spirit is a mark. We are marked with a mark of Christ, which is the Holy Spirit. So you have to utilize and activate the Holy Spirit. Many of us will not sin in our lives, hallelujah, in our daily life. What a small sin or great sin. I'm not uh, condemning and pointing out, but we would have reverence for the Lord, hallelujah, when we think of sinning because we know that we have the Holy Spirit. And so that's why many, even though they talk about the Holy Spirit and they believe in the, the Trinity, they would say, oh, the Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, they don't activate all have a revelation and an understanding of the Holy Spirit, which is, uh, as they say, the third person. The Holy Spirit lives in you as a believer. And so you may feel like God isn't there and far away when you're sinning, but the Holy Spirit is in you nonetheless. But if you keep on sinning, he is not in you. So stop saying, hallelujah, that you are, you are of Christ and you are a believer because if the Holy Spirit is not respected, Hallelujah. If you sin against the Holy Spirit, then he is going to depart. Hallelujah. Because you can grieve him and do so many things. And no one, hallelujah, will stay in their right mind. And especially with power that the Holy Spirit have, he is not going to stay, hallelujah, in a temple and in a vessel that uh, curses and sin and, and uh, def defamate and do all kinds of things. Hallelujah that is corrupt and unclean. Glory be to the name of the Lord. So get with it, hallelujah, and receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, let it be activated in your life. And also people of God, because of resurrection, the cross is a will with willful, hallelujah, humility. The cross is willful humility uh, because of resurrection, because Christ's death, was an act of his will. Amen. Remember, I told you that Christ, hallelujah, yes, we see him as Christ and a human who wore the earth, but he was still, hallelujah, God. And so in Philippians 2, 7 through 8, Paul states that Jesus humbled himself in obedience and died a criminal death, hallelujah, on the cross. And so we have been made whole through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all, according to the book of Hebrews 10 and 10. And also because of resurrection, hallelujah, the resurrection of Christ, the cross is prophetic. There being, there are many prophecies of the cross in the beginning, hallelujah, of the Bible from Genesis, hallelujah, to Revelation. From the beginning of time, especially once man, man would have sinned, God has been planning to rescue humanity from the clutches of evil by horrific death on the cross. Yet it was our weaknesses that he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed on him. And we thought his troubles, hallelujah, were a punishment from God, some would say. A punishment for his own sin. But I want to let you know, hallelujah, don't believe, hallelujah, that lie. And when I say don't believe that lie, I want to admonish everyone that is watching, hallelujah, who is under the sound of my voice. When you name Christ as your Lord, hallelujah, and you continue to sin, that others have to 
to really guess if you are a Christian. Hallelujah, because you are one thing here and another thing there. Hallelujah, you go to church or your office, wherever you go and whatever you do, you name the name of Christ, hallelujah, as your Lord. And then you, you say that you're a Christian, but you do all kinds of things that is contrary to that, where you are believing a lie. Because when you do such thing, hallelujah, you are acting as though, hallelujah, that Jesus, hallelujah, the troubles that he bear, he bore on that cross, hallelujah, was his punishment from God. You are crucifying Christ all over again. When you name the name of Christ and you lie and cheat and you conjure up all kind of evil, malicious thing, hallelujah, just to swindle people, hallelujah, when you pretend to be something, hallelujah, that you are not, then you are acting as though that God punished him and the punishment that Jesus took was, hallelujah, for his own sin. Glory be to the name of the Lord. And so we have to get it together, all of us, me and everyone, hallelujah, else, because that's, what's hap that's what happens when you act as though, when you say one thing, hallelujah, and do the next. If you preach Christ and preach his kingdom, but you act contrary and you don't live it, then you are acting as though the punishment that Jesus took, hallelujah, was for himself and not, hallelujah, for you. But the word of God says, <clears throat> hallelujah, but he was pierced for our rebellion, hallelujah, another version, crushed for our sins, you and I, hallelujah. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so that we could be healed, according to Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. He was disfigured, people of God, Hallelujah. He was tormented and completely bruised. Hallelujah. And tormented by that nail. Hallelujah. Pierced in his hand by that thorn that was placed. Hallelujah. In his head. Hallelujah. By that uh, sword that was placed in his side. Hallelujah. But not only was his punishment prophesied. Hallelujah. So was our atonement. Somebody ought to say glory. Hallelujah. So was our atonement prophesied. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Pierced for our sins, beaten for wholeness, whipped for healing, a divine exchange. Hallelujah. Blessings for curses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't nobody, hallelujah, say that I'm cursed or try. Hallelujah to curse me because I've received blessings. Hallelujah from Christ Jesus. And somebody ought to say that this morning. Type it or tell it to someone who is close to you. Hallelujah. I am blessed. Hallelujah. And I cannot be cursed because who God is blessed. Hallelujah. By this resurrection power and receiving every fullness. Hallelujah. Of his promise. I am blessed and not cursed. And I cannot be cursed. Hallelujah. Completeness for brokenness, unrighteousness for holiness. I can be holy, hallelujah, because, hallelujah, my Christ and my Lord is holy and he is in me. I am hope, hallelujah, for righteousness. The redemption, hallelujah, was prophesied. And people of God, finally, hallelujah, the cross is final. Because of resurrection power, that same power that rose Jesus from the dead and that lives in you and I and that want to come and dwell in you, hallelujah, today. Won't you accept Jesus, hallelujah. For those of you who are watching, many may have known me from my childhood, hallelujah. Many, many would have known me from around the community. They would have seen me growing up. They would have seen me participating in so many, uh, hallelujah, activities and going about my daily activities. But no one, hallelujah, perhaps would have been thinking and seeing that this girl, hallelujah, that this young woman would rise up, hallelujah, and mount a podium and preach Christ with confidence. I can tell you, that a few years ago, I have a lecturer, hallelujah, who was so dear to me, still is a wonderful, hallelujah,
Victoria lecturer. Uh, very, very encouraging and very motivating. A man, the love that she portrays, especially with our students, it is just second to none. And all of our students, hallelujah, they rise up and do great things in that field of work because of her. But that same hallelujah professor said to me, hallelujah, we were having a conversation and I couldn't think of the phrase that I wanted to say. And the lecturer came out and say, you are unsure of yourself. And my God, when I heard that word unsure of myself, that played in my mind over and over and over again. But somebody I want to say to you out there, if you are unsure of yourself, if others are unsure of you, if others that condemn you and count you off as nothing, if you feel that you are nothing, I want to let you know that you can rise up in Christ and be all that you can be. Even if you just call on the name of Jesus with mighty power that has been given to you from the Holy Spirit, you can by all means rise up, hallelujah, and be somebody because of this resurrection. When Satan, hallelujah, entered into those people, he entered into Judas, hallelujah, for, uh, for him to sin against God. When they crucified him, with Satan himself being the band leader, hallelujah, or the chair leader, taught that nothing would happen, this would be the end. He thinks that he knows everything because he is the prince of the power of the air. He is puffed up in pride, just like many, hallelujah, who are so puffed up in pride. They believe that they are where all things end and where all things be, and others will be nothing, and others will stay nothing. Anyone who think of themselves more than what they are and think of themselves more than others. Hallelujah. The word of God tells us about those who went to pray and the one who held his head down in reverence to the Lord and asked for forgiveness versus the one who say that he is not like this one, paraphrasing, he pays tithes or whatever. He does this and he does that. Hallelujah. There's a difference. Hallelujah. Between pride and hallelujah being boastful in Christ. Hallelujah. There is a big difference. And so people of God, if that one who is in pride count you out as nothing, today is your day to arise because of that resurrection power. Today is the day to receive Christ and receive who you are and who you were meant to be. Hallelujah. Realize it. Utilize it. Hallelujah, from the beginning of time, from the foundation of the world, because Christ has a plan for you, just as he did for all those prophets, our mothers, our parents, who would have, who would have gone on before. Hallelujah, Christ has a plan. There is always hope. Hallelujah, there was a time of slavery. Yes, there is still some form of slavery that is going on. Hallelujah. But many are free today when our ancestors, they were enslaved. Hallelujah. There was a time, hallelujah, when men, hallelujah, would condemn other men and they were revered and lifted up for doing so. But now, hallelujah, yes, there's still work to do. But those same men who would stand up and dare to do such a thing, now they are being condemned. So I want to let you know that there is hope for you. There is hope for I. Whatever the Lord wants me to do and whatever he wants you to do, you are no longer going to stand by the wayside. But you are going to take up your cross, whatever. Hallelujah, that cross is whatever the enemy tried to do. You are going to take it up. And you are going to realize and recognize that Christ overcame, hallelujah, that cross. And so will you, glory be to the name of the Lord. You may be persecuted. You may be abandoned, hallelujah. But you are more than an overcomer in your own right. Somebody ought to stand and say that I am more than an overcomer. Hallelujah. For those of us who are already in it and in the vineyard say i am more than an overcomer there is so much more that i can do in christ and there is so much more i am going to do hallelujah in christ and so finally because of resurrection the cross is final 
so many gays at the cross, hallelujah, and yet hold on to past hurt. They hold on to pain and they hold on to problems. These problems and pain and hurt people of God, they don't belong on your back anymore. Somebody say, you wicked bearer of heavy load and sin and condemnation, hallelujah. Carry a load and carry your own condemnation. In Jesus' name, I'm not going to carry it for you. Hallelujah. And so these things don't belong on your back anymore. Jesus has taken on, hallelujah. Jesus has taken on all of them. The debt, hallelujah, has been paid. Look at the cross and receive your salvation. And they sang a new song with these words. You are worthy to take the scroll and break it and break its seal and open it. For you were killed and your blood has ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have caused them to become God's kingdom and his priests. And they will reign on earth. Hallelujah. According to Revelation 5, 9. Hallelujah to 10. The NLT version. Glory be to the name of the Lord. And so I want to let you know those who are under the sound of my voice. Whether you are in Christ or you are about to be in Christ. Reign. Hallelujah. Reign. Reign. Because it's not you but it is Christ. Hallelujah. That is in you. Reign and rise up. Because it is not you, it is because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And you can do all things, hallelujah, through Christ who strengthens you. God bless you as apostle comes in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 He is alive. He is alive. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Come on, clap your hands unto the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Double check this for me, please. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you so much for that powerful word. Woman of God, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Why are we doing this this morning? Because we are celebrating the Lord and we're celebrating his glory today. Huh? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's get into the word of God this morning. Uh, as it relates to my page, some of you, we were trying to get it on our page, on my personal page. It looked like it's not going through on my page when I checked it. So we're going to just double check it. If you're still on this page, if you're live on Facebook, you can join as well as we pray and minister the word father right now in the name of jesus we just give you thanks and we give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor and we give you reverence for what you're doing for you truly are lord and you truly are god and beside you there is none other thank you for your matchless blood thank you for your resurrected power and for this we won't stop to give you the praise and the glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Somebody ought to say amen and amen. Those who are watching and watching live, God bless you. I pray to God for you. Let's just get this all lined up here. Thank you so much for your patience. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are trying to reach you at all levels today. Hallelujah. The enemy is fighting, for good, but he's defeated. Somebody shout hallelujah. Today I want to talk about the, thank you so much for staying on. Today I want to continue to talk about the kingdom keys of resurrection. The kingdom keys of resurrection. If you're live on here, I want you to like and share this quickly 
as we deliver the word of God so that everyone can be blessed. Hallelujah. He is alive, he is well, and he is resurrected. Praise the name of Jesus. Apostle Andrew, all of you, God bless you in Jesus' name. And we talk about the kingdom of God. We must understand that Jesus came to restore that which was lost. Jesus came to renew that which was stolen. Uh, in order to understand this, we must understand the kingdom assignment. I begin to look on Good Friday. Thank you for staying. Get your Bible. Stay with us for a few more minutes. Hallelujah. We began to see in Genesis chapter 3, the fall of man. We understand that in verse 3 it says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof. This is Eve. She took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. Praise God. When the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked, they sewed fake leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked and hid myself. And he said, the Lord God said to Adam, Who told you that you are naked? Praise God. He asked him, Who told you that you were naked? Because before the fall of man, there was no concept of nakedness, praise God. And if you were to study the word Eden, it means the spot, the presence of the glory of God. They were actually living and walking in the glory of God. They, Adam and Eve walked in the glory and the presence of God. And so there was no concept of nakedness. There was no concept of sin. There was no concept of death. They didn't see their own flesh. Hallelujah. That's for somebody right there. When you're under the glory of God, you don't see your own flesh. Hallelujah. When you're under the, the Shekinah glory of God resting upon your life, you're not walking carnally and sinful. And so Jesus came to restore which was lost from the beginning. What did he come to lost? Number one, restore. Jesus came to restore on this resurrected day through his death, his burial, and resurrection. One, the nakedness that man walked in. Two, to restore the glory that man lost when the presence of the Lord came. Three, the dominion. How do I know? The kingdom dominion. How do I know? Because the Bible said in Genesis chapter one, God made man, created him in his image, and he said, let them have dominion. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1, verses 28, 29, 30, 31. Man lost kingdom rulership. Man lost kingdom dominion in the earth. Man lost the glory of God that covered him. God bless you, all of you who are watching. And so Jesus is called the second Adam. And he came to restore that which Adam has lost. I know it's a wonderful day. It's a very emotional day. But I want us to understand the kingdom keys of the resurrection. Why the resurrection is important for you and I to live today and to have victory for the rest of our lives. The curse. And the Bible said, the thirdly or fourthly, the resurrection is powerful because in the curse, man was driven out of the presence of the Lord. Jesus came through his resurrection to restore man back into the holy presence of the Lord. Genesis chapter 3 verse 14 talks about the curse. The, not only was man, woman, the animal, and the ground curse. We had all four of those levels, man, woman, the animal, the serpent, and the ground was cursed. And so Jesus, through his resurrection, came to restore the blessing. Hallelujah. Back to Adam, back to Eve, back to the animals and all being in 
and he'll uh, uh, harmony and back to the earth being blessed so that everything we walk in and we possess and we do is blessed. Hallelujah. The word blessed means empowered to prosper. Hallelujah. Jesus became that ultimate high priest. We know that from Romans 5, 1 and 13, Hebrews 9 and 22, Leviticus 17 and 21, without the shedding of blood, there will be no forgiveness of sin. Hallelujah. Without the shedding of blood, there was no forgiveness of sin. John chapter 1 and 33 says, he is the Lamb of God. So Jesus, hallelujah, the Bible said, he became poor that we may become rich. He left the portals of heaven, took on the nature of human to pay the ultimate price for humanity. He was the Lamb of God. I want to let you know that. Hallelujah. When he came to the earth, he was the Lamb of God. The Bible calls him the Lamb of God, which was slain before the foundation of the world. Praise God. He was the lamb that was slain and the blood was shed for us. You better stay on because I'm going to dive into kingdom keys. I don't care if there's a pandemic. I don't care if there's a sickness. I don't care what's happened in the earth. I'm walking in the resurrected, blessed life. Hallelujah. I'm walking in the truth and it works in Malawi. It works in Andaman. It works in uh, Arachistan. It works in Delhi. It works in hallelujah. Um, Zimbabwe, it works in Johannesburg, it works, hallelujah, in Bhutan, Nepal, it works in Sierra Leone, it works in Nigeria, it works in New York City, it works in Nassau, hallelujah, it works in Freeport, it works in Freetown, Sierra Leone, hallelujah, I'm telling you this word is for you and I today, this word is for you, he is the Lamb of God, and because he's the Lamb, he takes away the sins of the world. This is the key to the kingdom of God. This is the key to the kingdom. How do I know? Let's jump into a few more things from Friday, and then we're going to go straight into today's message. Hallelujah. Kingdom keys of the resurrection. What am I saying? Jesus came to restore that which was lost in the fallen man. Jesus is called the second Adam. He came to restore Hallelujah, not just for us to have a shout, uh, but he came to restore our dominion and kingdom authority in the earth. I don't want just a regular message. I want truth that's going to transform me. Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. For this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for the remission of sins. Hallelujah. Jesus said, praise God, that he know his blood was shed so that the world's sin would be accounted for, that the world's sin would be atoned for. He died, shed his blood to establish a new testament. Now, the word testament means covenant, contract, agreement. He came, I'm going to teach this day. I know you want to shout, give me a few minutes, I might shout later on. But at the beginning, I want to teach this because we need to be transformed in the renewing of our mind. Jesus blood was shed so we can have forgiveness of sin. Now I taught this on Friday. His blood must have had so much power. Hallelujah. I asked you three questions. One, who was Adam's parents? I can answer that. He didn't have any biological parents. Secondly, which or whose blood flowed through the veins of Adam? And thirdly, when Adam sinned, what happened to his blood? So the first question is, Adam didn't have a father and mother, the Bible said, and God took the earth of the ground, blew into the nostril of Adam, which means earth, earthy, and he became a living soul. Suke, hallelujah, you know the Hebrew terms. Next, Adam had blood flowing through his body, but it was not the blood of any known human. He had the first blood the fresh blood, I call it the blood of God, praise God. He had the blood that was unique and distinct. He had a blood because every human being needs blood to live, praise God. You know, as a medical doctor, I've had to, you know, test people blood many times. I've studied the blood and I had to do, give people blood transfusion and all before, hallelujah. And I wanna let you know, every human needs blood, <laughs> hallelujah. So Adam was no different, he needed blood. Thirdly, when Adam sinned, what happened to his blood? According to the Bible, Adam's blood became contaminated. 
The Bible said in the book of Hebrews, through one man, Adam, sin entered the world. Through one man, sin, through Adam and Eve's disobedience in Genesis chapter 3, sin, which is what is sin? Sin is rebellion to the word of God. Sin is rebellion to the word of God. Praise the name of Jesus. Sin entered Adam and his blood became contaminated. Hallelujah. And we read in Genesis chapter 3 that the Lord took an animal and killed an animal. How do I know that? The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3 that the Lord God took some skin and covered him. Now, I'm just taking it from the scripture that that skin came from an animal. Praise God that, you know, the Lord, hallelujah, in Genesis chapter 3 and uh, verse 21 of Adam also unto his wife did the Lord make coats of skins and cover them. I believe that this principle in Genesis chapter 3 verse 21 established the principle. And that principle was and is forever. And that is without the shedding of blood, without the shedding of life, there must be a ransom, number three, and a payment for the sins of man. It means every time man sin. Number one, something dies. Number two, in order for that death to be paid for, something has to die in place of man. Praise God. And in order for uh, man to be forgiven, there must be blood. We read it already. Romans 5, Hebrews 9, Leviticus 17. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Blood needs to be shed to pay the price and the penalty for man's sin. Why? If God didn't use animals, he would have to kill us. Praise God. Every time we sin, something dies in us, and we really supposed to die. Every time we sin or we rebel against the word of God found in this Bible, we were supposed to die. But thanks be to the Lord. Before Jesus came, all of Israel sacrificed once a year, hallelujah, or certain seasons or during the time of offering for sins, they would go and go to Jerusalem. They would take an animal, sacrifice it, and the priest would once uh, every year, the high priest would once for himself offer up a sin offering for his own life. Because he was, even though he was the high priest, he was cognizant of the fact that he had sin in his life. Even though he was the high priest of Israel, every high priest would once pay the penalty for their own sin by sacrificing an animal for their own sin. And then they would go into the Holy of Holies, into the holy courts before the ark where the presence of the act of the covenant, which represent the glory of God, and they would sprinkle blood for the people. Now Israel got smart, and they understood that the high priest sometimes uh, had sin. You better share this quickly. Had sin in their own lives, uh, and so they would tie some bells and some pomegranates around the borders of the priest's outfit, and they would tie a rope around the priest's leg, uh, so that if that priest went into the holy of holies, if he went before the throne room of God, and then that holy place where the presence of the Lord was so holy if his sins were not covered if he did not cover his sin hallelujah the wages of sin is death if he didn't cover the the payment for his sin he would automatically die and that bell would stop ringing apostle Jacob and Andrew the the the, the leaders outside the temple would tighten up that hallelujah rope and they will have to pull that body out of that temple why because the payment of sin is death and if there was no atonement which is if there was no payment if there was no ransom if there was no legal transaction of paying by blood for the sin then that priest would die in the temple in genesis 3 and 21 Jehovah, Adonai, the Elohim, establish a principle. There must be blood shed, and out of that blood, there is a covering. We said, saw that all throughout Israel. And so from Genesis 
From then until the time of Jesus came to the earth, there was a priest that established the priest, the, 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 the first of all Moses, and then Aaron. And because Aaron sinned, the Lord took him from Aaron and made uh, the sons of Levi, who we call the Levitical priests. They took on the nature of the priestly ministry. Hallelujah. And then it was a bloody ministry. I want to let you know this gospel of Jesus Christ is bloody. It's filled with the blood sacrifice of turtle doves. It's filled with the, the bloody and bloody shed, uh, shedding of blood for, hallelujah, the innocent. It is filled with the blood, the shed blood of goat and calf, and the blood was sprinkled all over the place. Those who want to be the priesthood, those who want to be the saints of God, must not be afraid of blood. This gospel was built upon blood. This gospel was built upon the shedding of animals' blood for the remission of sin. This gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ was established through sacrifice. And so Jesus came. And when he came on the earth, he began to establish that which was lost. He began to establish that which was broken. What was lost and broken? I'm talking to some of you. What was lost and broken? Hallelujah. What was lost and broken? Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What was lost and broken? Hallelujah. What was lost and broken? I'm asking some of you. Praise the Lord. Let me speak to you. Praise the name of Jesus. What was lost and broken? That's it. What was lost and broken? Hallelujah. The sin. The nature of man. Thank you for your patience and waiting. Man lost his way. Let's get into this word. Continue. Hallelujah. What am I saying? Jesus came on the earth and man had lost his priesthood. So Jesus took on the reformed nature of being a priest. The Bible calls him the high priest. Secondly, what was lost and broken? Jesus came to be the second Adam. Now, listen, I talked about Adam. Now, if Jesus had the blood of man, which we know he did not have, how do I know? Number one, Jesus did not have a biological father like Adam. Joseph was not Jesus' father. So we know he did not have the blood of a human. Jesus did not have the blood of Mary because any infant born in the uterus has its own blood supply. And the blood supply of that uterus, uh, um, um, fetus in the uterus does not interact with the mother. And if it does, it's a dangerous thing. The infant can die. If Jesus had the blood of Mary and of Joseph, he by nature would have had the same sinful nature as Adam, as all of us are, and we, he would not qualify to be the savior. He needed a pure blood. He needed to be a lamb without spot and without blemish. I can tell you from medical science that Jesus had a, a, a unique blood supply. He had a blood supply that makes him fit to be the high priest. He doesn't have to go once every year into the Holy of Holies to present himself. He, Jesus doesn't have to go to Jerusalem every year during the Passover and offer up blood for himself and then the blood for all the people. Once and for all on that cross, Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice. His sacrifice was so great and so powerful. His blood was so pure and so whole that the Father saw it fit that in him all fullness should dwell. He no longer needs to hang on a cross every Passover. Jesus doesn't have to go to Jerusalem every year. Neither do you or I have 
to take a flight from Delhi and go to Jerusalem for our sins. No longer do we have to go from Miami, Florida to Jerusalem for our sin. No longer do we have to go from Blanchard every year and pay a priest to offer up sin sacrifices for you and I every year. Oh, hallelujah. No longer do we have to do it. No longer do we have to do it. No longer do we have to do it. Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice once and for all. If that doesn't excite you, let's look at the resurrection. Turn your Bibles. Hallelujah. What did Jesus restore? He is a kingdom man. He restored the kingdom back to us. First uh, Corinthians chapter 15. I need some of you praying. Those who are on Facebook. Pray and share this quickly, quickly. Those who are on, on this platform, I need you praying. I need you praying. People's lives are at stake. This is no regular message. This is a message of the kingdom. This is what Jesus came to restore every human back to kingdom authority. No longer will we be hold bound to fear and the fear of death. Hallelujah. No longer do we need to make a sacrifice. All we have to do is receive what Jesus did on the cross. Hallelujah. Thirdly, Jesus is the only priest that died and rose again. Hallelujah. If anyone died and rose from the dead and is still living, I would follow that person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Buddha never died and rose from the dead and is still alive. I want you to get three things. Jesus died, went to the grave, rose on the third day, and is alive forever. Why did I say that way? Because Jesus, when uh, Mary and Martha came to him and said, Lord, our brother Lazarus died. I studied this. In the Old Testament, Elijah rose, a young boy, a widow's boy, back to life. Hallelujah, Ezekiel's bones, uh, hallelujah, when they throwed, uh, hallelujah, some dead men on his bones, there was so much glory in him that those bones came back together and those soldiers lived, hallelujah, Jesus rose up, hallelujah, praise God, Jesus rose up, I'm talking to you, hallelujah, Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead, when his body was stink and decomposed, he rose him from the dead. But I want to let you know Jesus is the only one who died, rose from the dead, went to the grave, rose himself from the grave. Hallelujah. That's power. That's what this resurrection is about. He didn't only let someone raise him. He rose himself from the dead. He died, went into, hallelujah, the powers of hell. He went into the belly of the earth and he convicted and he judged and he set the captives free. He spoiled principalities and powers. And on the third day, Jesus touched his chest and he rose himself up from the grave. Praise God. That's why I don't serve Buddha. That's why I don't serve Confucius. That's why I don't serve Lakshmi or Shiva. That's why I don't serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Satan, that nasty devil, because he has no power. He cannot raise himself. He is a defeated, uh, disembodied uh, spiritual being. That's why we serve Jesus, because Jesus does, didn't only raise from the dead. Jesus is the resurrection. He doesn't only resurrect. He resurrects himself. He is the resurrection. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus is the resurrection. He is the life. And through him, we have kingdom authority. What a God to put your trust in. Knowing that if you died, he would raise you from the dead. Knowing that if you died, praise God, you, I'm talking to you. If you died today, he will raise your body up if you are in Christ Jesus. What a living God we serve. Not only will he raise your body, if something seems dead in your life, Jesus today will resurrect it. Jesus doesn't concern, care about the level of decay in your situation. I'm telling you, whether it's at the beginning, 
whether that situation, that business, that ministry, that family, that marriage, that home, that life, that dream, I don't care how dead it seems, Jesus is the resurrection. In him is resurrection and life. In him is the fullness of life and resurrection, and he will raise up anything in your life wherever it is. That's why around the world, the believers in Jesus Christ are the only people who are still raising from the dead those who would have died. I remember praying for people who are on their sick bed and seeing them raise. Andrew, you're here today. You, you and Mary, Hallelujah, we're on the verge of great sickness being inflicted with coronavirus. Some of you were inf inflicted with coronavirus and raised from the dead clings of Satan. Why? Because resurrection power is in you and I. Hallelujah, I want you to walk out this week in resurrection power. I don't want you to live defeated lives. Uh, I want you to use your mouth and that which thing you see is dying. You commanded to come back to life in Jesus' name. That promise the Lord gave you, speak over that promise and say, come it out in the name of Jesus. I don't care what it looks like, Jesus, and you use the name of, in the name of the resurrected Jesus, I command that death and dying body to arise. Every so often I speak to my body too. I say in the name of Jesus, I command the resurrected Jesus to flow through my body. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Jesus is the only one that rose from the dead and is alive today. Hallelujah. That's why, hallelujah. I know I pray for my Muslim friends and, and, and loved ones. They're wonderful people, but they need to come into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is the only one who's going to raise their body up. Praise God. I love my Hindu brothers and sisters around the world. I love my people of all races and colors and religion. I'm not angry with them. I just realize that they are in the wrong service. They're serving the wrong person. Oh, there is no one who can raise their body. Hallelujah. They've been promised. You know why? They go out there and bomb up other people because they believe that when they die, they're going to awaken up to a place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our brothers and sisters uh, of, of Hindu background, we're praying for them because they believe they're going to reincarnate. I want to let our Hindu family know that you don't have to die and be uncertain uh, as to what's going to happen to you. Ah, the same way that Jesus rose his body up from the dead. If you make Jesus Christ your Lord, he will raise you up the same way and you will have the same body and you will have the same beautiful smile and you will have your same beautiful family. Jesus is not going to raise you up to make you a snake in the next life. He is not going to uh, reincarnate you to some other being. I don't want to serve a, a religion. I don't want to be in a religion. And I don't want to serve some deity that says I'm coming back as a frog or a lizard. Or I don't know what I'm coming back. Jesus promises the same way you die, he will raise up you and your body glorified. He will raise up your body in strength and in power. There is resurrection in Jesus. Our dear brothers from the Middle East, they believe if they bomb up for the name of their religion, they're going to waken up with 10 virgins. Hallelujah. I don't want to, I don't want to bomb up my body and bomb up other human beings and wake up to in paradise with 10 virgins and, and gold coins. That's no promise. What are you going to do with the virgin in, in paradise? That makes no sense to me. Jesus promises he will resurrect your body, give you a body without sickness, without disease, without death. And you will live forever with him and you will rule with him and you will have authority in him. And you will have everlasting life and you will have everlasting peace and you will live with him and he's prepared a mansion and he's prepared a home and he's prepared a place and he's going to destroy this old world and create a new heaven and a new earth, a beautiful new earth, even as it was in the beginning when Adam and Eve lost that beautiful garden, he's going to create a new earth without corruption, without contaminated seas, without polluted air. 
without deforestation, without pestilence and disease, uh, hallelujah, that has plagued humanity. One day this resurrected Jesus, this King of glory, this King called Jesus is going to give a new heaven and a new earth and new bodies to his followers and we will rule and reign with him forever. That is the greatest promise that we can live by. Why wouldn't you and I want to live for him? What amazing promises. How do I know? Now, Jesus, next point of the kingdom keys of the resurrection, Jesus himself did not only uh, raise from the dead and was seen by some of his inner circle people. That would make it a fallacy. I'm here to prove to you today that when Jesus rose from the dead, he rose and other people saw him. Shalewa read earlier that even when he rose, when Jesus died uh, on that day, when he went to the grave, all those who died in Christ, the tombs broke open and they are rose from their dead. He has so much power that when he died and ruined into the deepest part of the earth, those who were dead in Christ, their bodies could not stay down. Oh, glory, he is so powerful that all in Israel and Jerusalem were woken up from their dead tombs and they were seen walking the earth. How do I know that? I'm reading it for you. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1. All the brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also ye have received and wherein you stand, but which also you are saved. How do I know this? We are saved by this preaching of the cross. We, the world will be saved. I don't care how fancy we get in our message. Our message must remain the same. We must continue to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We must continue to preach the cross. We must continue to preach Jesus is not dead on a cross. I don't wear him on a cross. He is off the cross. He is alive, but I wear this cross because in the preaching of this cross is what the world needs to hear, that the man who is God in the flesh, he is God all and all man, pure, paid the ransom because his blood was the purest blood that can ever be offered once and for all before the heavens for the payment of the sin of man. That seven billion people have access to the blood every day, all day, continually for eternity. And that eternity is one day that blood will still flow, but it will not be made available to a dying world. If you die without the blood of Jesus, you have lost access to the blood. If you die without receiving the blood to cover your sin, your guilt, your shame, your violation, your money cannot save you. Your career cannot save you. Your education cannot save you. Nothing can save you. That blood of Jesus has been cut off. One day when Jesus comes again, and he's coming back very soon. Hallelujah. He's coming for people who are covered by the blood. He's coming for people who have him on their hearts. He's coming for people who have resurrection power in their body. Hallelujah. That means uh, when the trump of God shall sound the dead in Christ. You better share this quickly with somebody on Facebook or live or wherever you're sharing or watching it. Jesus is coming back. I believe when that trumpet of God is sound. I believe, praise God, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I believe when that trumpet is sound, those who have resurrection power in their body, I believe those uh, who have the Holy Spirit, uh, who have the blood of Jesus will have that resurrection power in their body. And when the trumpet of God is sound, uh, that resurrection spirit and power of the Holy Ghost in their body will shake in their body and raise them from the dead. Hallelujah. All, how many millions of people Hallelujah. The Bible said the dead in Christ shall rise first. Hallelujah. Because Jesus specializes in resurrection. Jesus is resurrection power. Jesus is the resurrector that those who lie in a coffin, those who bodies were scattered in the ocean, those who bodies are deep beneath the earth. Hallelujah. Those whose bodies have been scattered and sprinkled all in the atmosphere, their bodies 
bodies when the trumpet of God will sound when the resurrected Lord causes the angels of heaven on his coming and on his return to blow that trumpet that bodies cells and organs and body parts are, are going to flow from around the world and they're going to reconnect and they're going to recreate that human being that was martyred for Jesus, that human being that was killed for Jesus, that human being that died in a plane crash for Jesus, that human being that died on their sick bed and was buried, that human being who loved Jesus, who died at the bottom of the ocean, he's going to cause those body parts to reassemble and he's going to create a new body resurrected and then those who are alive and remain the bible says oh glory when that trumpet of god shall sound those who are alive body is going to begin to shake and that sound is going to shake the resurrection power in them and they will be caught up to meet the lord in the air this is the gospel we preach. This is the hope of the kingdom. 1 Corinthians 15 and 3, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scripture. This is our blessed hope in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And that he was seen of Cephas and then of the 12. Jesus made it a living proof and evidence to show himself to other believers. He showed himself to Cephas. Then he showed himself to 12 other believers. After that, 1 Corinthians 15 and 6. Watch this now. This is proof of the resurrection. These are some powerful keys to build your faith on. When you're telling the world. Hallelujah. When you're teaching this or when you're reading it yourselves to give you faith, the Bible said in 1 Corinthians 15 and 6, after that, Jesus was seen of above 500 brethren at once. Now, if you tell me 500 people saw Jesus individually, I might not have believed that Jesus is who he said he was. It would be believable, but not as believable. But if 500 people all at one time saw Jesus the very same time after he rose from the dead, after he was resurrected, hallelujah, that is empirical scientific evidence of the resurrection of the physical body of Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about some spiritual body. I'm talking about a physical body that we can touch. How do I know? Jesus went and uh, Thomas had a little doubt believing in him. So Jesus showed up at a meeting with the disciples and he said, Thomas, to put your hand in my hand and put your hand in my side. There was physical body that Thomas and the disciples touched. Jesus, before he resurrect, uh, ascended into heaven, sat down with Peter and some of the disciples on the shore and ate fish and bread with them. He physically ate it. He wanted to demonstrate and he continued, the Bible said, even as he was eating and teaching, he was teaching them about the kingdom of Jesus Christ. He was teaching about the rulership and authority of Jesus. He was teaching about the principles of the kingdom of God, whereby they must live. And they had to go out and teach and share it to the world. 1 Corinthians 15 and 6, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James and of all the apostles. Jesus made sure he showed himself to the apostles. And I believe it was because Jesus showed himself to the apostles and to the early church that they were willing to die themselves. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, Peter was not afraid to die for Jesus because he said, I've seen Jesus die. I saw him rose from the dead. I ate with him. I spoke with him. I talked with him. If a person can do this, I don't care what you do. Peter and the apostle said, if you behead, my, behead me, I know Jesus will raise me up. If you feed me to the lions as they did in Rome, if you hang me on upside down crosses, uh, if you put me in hot boiling oil, if you cut me a in half like some of the earth 
early apostles died, they had such faith because they saw the resurrected Jesus. They had so much faith. They had so much power. They had so much belief. And I want to let you know that's available for us today. If we were to believe truly that Jesus is the resurrection, we would not be afraid of death. We would not be afraid of suffering. We would not be afraid of, afraid of pain. We would not be stuck and stagnant. Because we know we serve a risen Lord and he will raise us up the same way he rose up those apostles. He will deliver his word just like he promised. If he could die and tell him on the third day I'll raise from the dead and do that, he will fulfill your prayer requests. I know he answers your prayers because he's alive. I know he can heal your body because he's alive. I know he can deliver you from the power of darkness because Jesus is alive. I know he can give you the financial miracle you need in this corona time because Jesus is alive. I know he can protect you from an eye from every disease and pestilence this world has because he's alive. I know he will keep us from every witch and warlock and wizard because Jesus is alive. He's not dead. He's not asleep. We don't have to beat ourselves uh, to wake up the gods. Uh, Jesus is the true and living God. He is alive. He is well. He's sitting on his throne. The Bible said, our God, he neither slumbers and he does not sleep. The Lord is on his holy throne. Let the whole world give him praise. Verse 8. And last of all, he was saying of me also, of Paul, as one born out of due season. For I am the least of the apostles, Paul said. He was seen of Paul. What is the kingdom keys to the resurrection? Pray as I close up. 1 Corinthians 15 and 12. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection? Hallelujah. Satan will never promise you. I don't know why people serve Satan. Satan never promises he'll raise anyone from the dead. In fact, the Bible said Satan, that old demon and that old devils that people give their life to come to kill, steal, and to destroy. He is the father of lies. In him is death and destruction. He will never raise you from the dead. He will give you some temporary riches and pleasure, but it's at the sake of your body your mind and your soul. He will never resurrect you from the dead. If you die a Satanist, a Buddhist, a Hindu, a Muslim, you are going to spend eternity in hell with Satan. If you don't make Jesus Christ your Lord. If you are agnostic, if you are atheist, if you, you have all types of uh, questions and challenges about Jesus and who he is, you are going to die. You might have all of the world's riches. There was a famous discoverer. This guy built a product, if I call it, all of you have it in this house. He was a billionaire. He died a Buddhist. He died without Jesus Christ. He is in eternal hell. If you're a surgeon, you can be the best heart surgeon. You can be the best brain surgeon. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you would have helped thousands of people and lose your very soul in eternity. And none of those good works, none of those good acts, none of those wonderful things you've done to touch and save lives are going to save you from going to an eternal hell where your body will never see its full resurrected power. Your body will never have its full uh, peace and joy. In fact, your body will be filled with torment and pain and suffering and disease. The Bible said in hell, the worm dieth not. There is torment. There is heat. There is separation from the Lord. There is shame. There is pain and disgrace. There is no hope in hell without the resurrected Jesus. Verse 13, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. If Jesus did not raise from the dead and there's no resurrection, we are powerless. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain and your faith is also vain. Paul is saying if Jesus did not die and did not raise from the dead, all that we're doing and preaching, me standing here is a waste of time. But thanks be to God. We know he is alive. How do I know? Because he lives in you and I. Because he saved you and I. Because he's washed you and I. Because he has showed us his supernatural power. 
I know that Jesus is alive because he saved me. I was lost. I was on my way to hell. I was on my way to destruction. But his word came to me and his Holy Spirit filled me and washed away when I made him the Lord of my life. The pain, the guilt, and the shame. Hallelujah. When I walked with him, even though I fell and stumbled, I went to the Lord and used his blood and I confess my sin and he cleanses me. And now he is blessing me. He's given me peace. He's given me hope. He's given me joy. I've seen demonic spirits cast out of people in the name of the resurrected Jesus. I've seen deaf ears open up in the name of Jesus, the resurrected one. I've seen, and Shalewa and I have seen the dumb speak in the name of the resurrected one. We've seen people with tormented souls, uh, minds who, who were not focused. They were wandering the streets uh, and they were lost and their family had given up on them and they were broken. And we saw as we prayed for them and they accepted Jesus Christ, the resurrected one. They were cleansed. They were healed. Their minds were back intact. They begin to work and get jobs and they begin to grow. They begin to worship this resurrected Jesus miraculously. We've seen murderers come to Jesus. We've seen drug dealers come to Jesus and that resurrected Jesus took away that drunkenness, took away that desire for cigarette smoking, took away that desire for liquor and alcohol drinking. This resurrected Jesus turned prostitutes. We've seen and know of people who are prostitutes uh, who this resurrected Jesus took away. We know people who are gay and homosexuals who Jesus took away that gay and homosexual I lifestyle and mentality and cleansed them up and made them whole and made them pure. I know this resurrected Jesus is alive and he is well because he lives today and he lives in you and I and all of you who have lives have been changed. No longer bound by sin. No longer bound by death. No longer bound by depression and fear. No longer bound by hurt and disgrace. And you are overwhelmed with the love of the resurrected Jesus that you want to tell the world. I am so in love with Jesus. I want to tell the world about Jesus. I want to tell everyone about his resurrection power. How he can take you from the pits of despair. Uh, from any nation and any tribe and any town and take you and put you on the path of fulfilling greatness and your purpose in life. He can take you out of being destitute uh, and ostracized uh, and rejected and pushed away and outcast. What they call them in India? The untouchables. He will take the untouchable and make you the lovable. He will break the, the caste system. He will break the racial system. He will break the financial system. He will break the apartheid system. He will break the prejudice, the injustice. He will break the oppression and suppression. He will take away every form of racist attack against your life. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter where your race, your color, your background, your class or your caste system. He will break those barriers and raise you up and make you be all that he's called you to be. And nobody can stop it. It's because of his resurrection power we have authority to live today. Shout hallelujah. This resurrection is not the cry and be some old weak Christian. This resurrection power is all the power. It's called the dunamis power. That means the dynamite power of God lives in you. Hallelujah. Christ in me, the hope of all glory. Christ in you, the hope of all glory. We have the resurrected Christ in us. It means we have all power and we have all authority. We have delegated authority. We have uh, exousia authority. We have dunamis power, dynamite power to see the supernatural happen in your life. We have the dunamis. We have the exousia. We have designated authority. We have kingdom authority. We have power to represent the king in this life. And there's nothing that can stop you and I because the king of glory lives in you and I. He is alive. And I, because he's alive, I am alive. Hallelujah. Those who don't have Jesus Christ are dead. They're the walking dead. You, if you don't have Jesus Christ, share this with somebody. If you have loved ones, if you have friends, come on, share it, share it, share it, share it. 
if your loved ones do not have Jesus Christ in their life, they are dead. They are defeated. They are lost. Come on, share this. Let them know they're the walking dead. Hallelujah. I tell my family, get to know Jesus Christ. Because if you die without Jesus Christ, you are the walking dead. There are people walking around today without Jesus and the resurrected in their life. And they think they're living life. They have the drink liquor. They got to have uh, illicit sex. Uh, they got to prostitute. They got to gamble. Uh, they got to drink. They got to shoot up heroin and drugs. Uh, they have to get high on a substance because they are dead. Uh, they are empty. Hallelujah. People without Jesus Christ are empty. There's half of the world's population are empty. They are unfulfilled. They are defeated. They are tormented. They have no peace. They have no joy. They have no comfort. Because without the resurrected one, you have no hope for tomorrow. I'm appealing to you listening today. I don't know who you are listening, watching. I'm appealing to you. If you don't know Jesus Christ and your family don't know Jesus Christ, let them come to him today. Hallelujah. Let your wives come to Jesus. Let your children come to Jesus. That's the only hope they will have in this life. That's the only hope they will have of a future. It's the only hope you can give them. It's the greatest gift you and I can give to our family. Not a car, not an educational degree, not some jewelry, not some bag, not some gift. The greatest gift we can give to our spouses and to our family and to our children and to our cousins and to our parents and to our brothers and sisters is the gift of telling them about the resurrected Jesus so they don't die and spend the rest of their eternity without his power. I'm finishing now. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all miserable. Verse 20, 1 Corinthians 15, 20. But now is Christ risen. Christ is risen from the dead. And he's become the first fruit of them that sleep. Uh, it means Christ, because he died and rose from the dead, he was the first model. He was the prototype. It means every one of us after Jesus Christ who makes him Lord will do the same thing. We will, if we die, we will raise in Christ. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. You know the story. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all, may, all be made alive. Adam lost life and died. The Bible said, the Lord said, when you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. That's old snake, lion, serpent told Eve and Adam, told Eve, who told Adam that they will not die. Jesus, the second Adam, came to bring life and to destroy death. That's what Adam and Eve lost. But every man, in his own order, Christ the first fruit. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Then come at the end when he shall del have delivered up the kingdom to God. One day Jesus is going to deliver up the kingdom and all the kingdoms of the Lord to Jehovah Adonai Elohim. Verse 24. When he shall have put down all rule and authority and power. Every power is going to die. This is what Jesus' resurrection did. He calls for every power now that is satanic and demonic to have no power. It has been nullified. Jesus said, all power has been given unto me. Well, if Jesus has all power, I mean, Satan has no power. For he must reign until he had put all things under his feet. The last enemy, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. 1 Corinthians 15, 26 said, the last enemy, all of humanity, the greatest enemy of humanity is debt. We are in a corona crisis. We are in a pandemic and the greatest enemy is debt. There are millions of people dying around the world. That's the greatest enemy. Man can control their water. Man can control the environment. Man can control their money, their home. One thing that man cannot control is death. Only Jesus can control ultimately death. Now, I'm not saying somebody cannot take their own life and commit suicide. Yes, that can happen. But I'm saying the one 
who is the ultimate destroyer of death, the one who is going to ultimately give life and eternal life is Jesus Christ. He has power to destroy death. So you don't be afraid today. Wherever you are, I'm about to pray for you. I want to break the power of the fear of death. Some of you are afraid to live because you are afraid of death. Some of you are afraid to preach the gospel because you're afraid of death. Some of you are afraid to write that book because you're afraid of death. Some of you are afraid, hallelujah, to pray because you're afraid of death. Some of you just, just we're going to break that power of the fear of death. For he had put all things on his feet. When he had said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. Hallelujah. Let's go down. Verse 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. Our bodies will be sown in corruption. It will be raised in incorruption. It will be it is sown in dishonor. It will be raised in glory. We're going to be raised in glory. We're going to be raised uncorruptible. We are going to be, we are weak now. We are frail now. Can you imagine as beautiful as you are? Your body has not reached its full potential. It is riddled with pain and arthritis. It is subjected to all types of disease, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, stroke. Your bodies and ours are, are subject to the environment. If we don't pray and exercise and take proper nutrition, with all of that, our bodies are still subjected. But Jesus promised that, that he's going to raise our bodies incorruptible. He's going to raise our body. Verse 45, 1 Corinthians 15, 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Come, Shalewa. The last man, Adam, was made a quickening spirit. How be it that was not, hallelujah, uh, which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth. This is Adam. The second man, Jesus, is Lord, the Lord from the heaven. I want you to get that. Adam was the first man, and when he fell, sin came in. Jesus was not from the earth. He came from heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The first man, the Lord made him out of the dirt. Can you imagine? Jesus' body was not made from the earth. Hallelujah. He was not earthly. He was not sensual. He was not fallen and not frail. His body was spiritual. It was supernatural. Uh, even though he had an earthly flesh, an earthly case, he was spiritual and powerful. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 15 and 51. Shalei was coming. Uh, I'm going to bring this home now with the word of God. It says, uh, First Corinthians 15 and 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. Uh, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Uh, boy, if I have time to preach, I'll preach this today. Uh, hallelujah. There is a mystery uh, in the kingdom of the resurrection. Uh, we will not all sleep. Uh, we're not all going to stay in the grave. I'm so glad of this. Oh, mama, we're going to see you again. Oh, daddy, we're going to see you again. Some of you had brothers, sisters, and family who have gone on into their eternal sleep for now. Hallelujah. But Jesus promises that we shall not all sleep. Give me some music as we worship. We shall be changed. Hallelujah. Every year I get excited uh, about preaching this. Uh, this old sick body uh, won't be sick forever. This old corrupted body uh, will be incorruptible. This old body uh, will be changed. Uh, give me some music in there. Uh, in a moment, uh, it will take long. Uh, Jesus said, uh, in a moment, uh, in the twinkling of an eye, uh, at the last trump, for the trump of God to sound, uh, and the dead in Christ shall arise. And it won't take long, mama. It ain't going to take long, daddy. It ain't going to take long, sisters and brother. It's going to happen quickly because resurrection is in Jesus. He doesn't have to take long to work up something. It's going to be sudden. That's why I serve him. That's why I live for him. That's why I give everything for him. Oh, his promises are great. Resurrection is amazing. Resurrection is powerful. We are victorious in life and in death through Jesus. 
and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. All of those sick bodies, all of the pains, all of the martyrs who died for Christ. Oh, tell the Muslims, you might kill the body, but we're coming back. Tell the Hindu fanatics, you might kill the body, but we're coming back. Tell the murderers of Christ, yay, God, we're coming back. You can't stop us in Christ. Tell the seas, we're coming back. Tell that we're coming back. Tell that we got resurrection power. We're coming back again. Death cannot hold us. That where is your sting? Grave, you don't have the victory. Thanks be to God. We triumph in Christ Jesus. This mortal body, oh, this mortal, some 40 years, some 50 years, some 70. I thought about it yesterday. Even if I take all my vitamins, even if I use the best technologies of the best universities around the world, hallelujah, even if I exercise daily, Oh, God, and these are all the things. I've studied medical science as a doctor, and I've tried to find all of the life-giving, long-length life things. But in the midst of it, I still see cardiothoracic surgeons die. I see researchers dying. I see ICU doctors dying. And I realize no matter what we do, people of God, one day, hallelujah, a time clock of life. One day, the time clock of life will hit that midnight hour. And no matter what it is, or no matter what that age is, that death spirit is going to come knocking. And it's going to say, your time has come because you're mortal. Hallelujah. I was thinking about it yesterday. How short a hundred years old is. Hallelujah. My God, in just a few decades, whoa, many of us will be hitting 70, 80. And I thought about it, my God, how short life is. Oh, God, I cannot put all of my hope in this short life. I cannot put all of my focus in this life. I can't put all my resources in thinking I'm going to be here forever. I'm going to have to start thinking about the immortality. I'm going to have to start thinking about eternity. I'm going to have to start thinking about the incorruptible. Oh, God, if I got to forgive anybody, I'm letting them go. If I got to let go of sin, I'm going to let it go. If I got to obey this word, though it costs me all my family and friends, I'm going to do it because there is an eternity I have on my mind. I'm thinking eternity. Oh God, I'm thinking about the eternal life. I'm thinking about forever. I'm thinking about seeing Jesus. I'm thinking about giving my life fully to see the Lord. I might not be liked by everyone. In fact, I might be hated by some, but I know I'm living for the day that this all mortal bodies. I don't care how much soap I put on. The next day I'm dirty. I don't care how much deodorant I put on. The next day I'm smelly. I don't care how much clothes I put on. When I take it off, it's still a frail body. Subject. Oh, God to this life, but I know that one day, if I stay with my Jesus, if I don't lose my focus, if I just stay until the end, oh, this corruptible body will put on incorruption, and this mortal body shall put on immortality, uh, um, death, uh, you ought to look death in the eye 
and said, Dad, you're going to be swallowed up in victory. That right now, you are being swallowed up by the resurrected Jesus. Oh, Dad, where is your sting? The old saints used to believe that those in Christ, when they die, will just transition. That death won't even touch their body. I kind of believe that. That when the saints of old, who walked with the resurrected Jesus, when death came to their door, the Lord just said, death, death, back away. I'm going to take my child home. Keep this body for now. I'm going to keep their spirit. But one day, Jesus is going to take that spirit and say, death, give up that body. Body, and he's going to put the two back together, the spirit in the body, just like he did with Adam, a new body, a new soul, a new spirit, free of depression, free of anxiety, free of fear, and oh, that's what he's going to do. Where is your victory grave? You can't hold the saint back. Oh, you can't hold us in the tomb forever because my Jesus is coming back for everyone that gave their heart to him. My Jesus, the resurrected one, is coming back for everybody. He's going to break up the grave. He's going to mash up the tombs. He's going to dig up the bones and parts of the body from wherever they're scattered. And he's going to say, give up the body. It belongs to me. The Bible says, know ye not that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is coming back for his temples. He's going to build back up his temple block by block, building by building. And he's going to put his spirit back in. The sting of death is sin. And the stead, the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus. I got to end on this. Oh, God, we're going to get these victory. I want to let you know that Jesus came and gave us kingdom authority. We have victory now. Go and lay hands on the sick. Go and cast out devils. Go and preach the gospel of this kingdom message to the world. Let this world know one last time, here on Mashiach, that even if Corona comes, even if heart attack comes, a stroke comes, oh Lord, you can have victory. Oh, resurrected Jesus, how I love you, how I praise you, and I adore you. Oh my God, the greatest decision of all my life hey, is serving Jesus. I want to tell the world, come to this resurrector. Come to this one who can shake up your life. Come to this one who can destroy the death spirit of cancer. Come to the one who can destroy uh, uh, the death of mental illness. Come to the one, uh, oh God, uh, who gives you hope in the space of fear of death. Uh, come to the one uh, uh, that loves you so much, uh, that gave you victory, uh, that you may live, that you may go on. I know, I know, I know. I'm supposed to teach, but I feel the anointing because there is miracles. I prophesy by a word of knowledge. You who are listening, you're coming alive. Oh, God, I feel it in your kingdom purpose, in your divine assignment. You won't let fear and death hold you back. You won't let your past keep you in the grave. Rise up out of that grave of sickness, out of that grave of self-pity. Get out of self-pity. Get out of shame. Get out of pain and come into 
your kingdom place. The resurrection is to raise you and I in the kingdom purpose. Your resurrected Jesus, your king and my king, your Lord and my Lord has raised us up. Therefore, uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 58 says, Come, Shalewa, we're about to pray. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the word of the Lord. Because I have resurrection, I'm always moving. Because I have resurrection, I'm unshakable. I don't care what the devil does. I don't care what he tries. Yes, it hurts sometimes, but I'm steadfast. I want some of you to get steadfast. I want you to plant your feet. Be unmovable. Stand in your confidence. Know who your God is. Do not be swayed by everything that comes. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. All oh, preachers, all oh, teachers, all oh, believers of Jesus Christ, all oh, saints, continue working for the Lord. Hallelujah. In spite of how you feel, keep working. There's a reward from the resurrected one. Keep working for Jesus. Keep evangelizing. Keep teaching. Keep loving. Keep praying. Keep walking holy. Get rid of those things that will distract you. Get rid of hate. Get rid of bitterness. Get rid of anger. Get rid of sin. Get rid of rebellion. Come into humility with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm speaking of myself. Encourage yourself in the Lord. If no one encourages you, keep pressing on. Keep pressing on. Keep pressing on. For you know in this much that your labor it's not in vain. Jesus, because he lives, he's keeping a record of, of everything you've done, every prayer you prayed, every song you worship, every righteous thing you did. Hallelujah, seen and unseen. My resurrected Jesus, he is alive and he's keeping record. He's alive and he watches over you and I. He inhabits the praise Jesus of his people and he sends his Holy Spirit to live in us, Christ in us, the hope of all glory, Christ in us, the same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives in you and I. Oh God, I wish I had another witness, the same spirit. Oh my God, I'm going back to my preaching days. The same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead lives in you and I. If you are his followers, the, the same power of resurrection is in your hands. The same power of resurrection is in your feet. The same anointing that shook him out of the tomb. The same anointing that caused dead bodies to raise up in Jerusalem. The same spirit that tore the veil and broke the the temple in half. The same spirit that lifted him up from the earth when he ascended into heaven. Jesus went up in front of the disciples. He said, I'm going to send the same Holy Spirit. Somebody need the Holy Spirit. If you are a believer and you don't have the Holy Spirit, you ain't going to have much power. You need the Holy Ghost. And I just believe when you have that Holy Ghost power, he gives you the evidence like on the book of Acts with praying in an unknown town. Shut up, I Santa. I believe uh, a sign uh, of the filling of the Holy Spirit. Uh, is praying with a new town. I believe uh, a sign uh, of the resurrected Jesus living in you and I uh, through the Holy Ghost. Uh, it's through us. Hallelujah. Living a holy life. Uh, I believe, like Shalewa said, uh, that we have a life that's exemplary. Uh, we have a life that's pure. Uh, 
We have a life that's true. I believe the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, is evidence of the resurrected Jesus living in you and I now. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, that we have righteousness. Uh, we have peace, uh, uh, we have joy uh, in the Holy Ghost. Uh, I'm about to pray, uh, but Lord, I worship you. Come on, worship. Uh, Lord, I praise you. Uh, Lord, I magnify you. Uh, I make known your glory around the world. Uh, I make it a declaration that Jesus is the one and true uh, and living Lord and God of the universe. Uh, I say it to the world. Uh, I say it for powers to hell. I say it for principalities to shake. I say it for demons to tremble. I say it for diseases to be rebuked. Satan, the Lord rebukes you. Every strong man against your life, receive it. The resurrected Jesus and the host of angels crush that power. I say it now by the power of Jesus. You may not have nothing now, but I say that power of the resurrected one. I call it forth over your life. I speak favor over your life. I speak power over your life. I speak hope over your life. I speak miraculous out of your life. Luke 17 and 21 says, hallelujah, the kingdom of God is on the inside of you. The kingdom of God is in you. The kingdom of God is in you, not just his kingdom, but the king is in you, and therefore the kingdom is in your life. Go into all the world and teach the gospel of the kingdom. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, baptizing them in the name of Jesus. I preached the gospel and Jesus said, Lo, I am with you. Lo, I'm not dead, but I'm with you. Jesus said, as you go, I walk with you. Hallelujah. That means he's alive. Somebody shout, he's alive. Hallelujah. Tell the world that Jesus, Jesus is alive. Mamas, what He's alive. He's alive. Oh, oh, Jesus. Jesus is alive. He's alive. <laughs> He's alive forevermore. I need to prophesy. He's alive. He's alive forevermore. No longer will he die. <laughs> no longer will he die. No longer will he die. He's alive forever. Never, 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 never. Father, right now in the name of Jesus. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord, I invite you to know him today. Bible said, if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart, the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. If you're being saved, if you're backslid and come back to Jesus today. If you knew Jesus Christ and you went back into the world to follow Satan, come back to Jesus today. Today is the day of your miracle. Wherever you are, listening and watching, say this prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. Deliver me. Heal me now. In the name of Jesus. I want your Holy Spirit. I want the resurrected one in my life. Receive the resurrected Savior. If you said that bread today, the Lord has touched your life. Hallelujah. Shalei, when I just want to pray with you to stretch your hands. You want to release the love of the Lord and the love of the resurrected Savior upon your life. And I prophesy today by the power of the Holy Spirit, your miracle is today. 
I prophesy today that something miraculous is going to resurrect in your life. I call your faith back alive. I call your ministry back alive. I call your spirit back alive. You will live. We shall live and not die until we finish the assignment of the Lord. That we curse you of our lives and of our family. Go to hell, you devil of death, hell, and the grave. We command you by the resurrected Jesus. Die and go to hell. Use your power right now. You will live. I command life. I command strength. I command living. I command every curse of death to be broken. I command every sickness, disease, infirmity to dry up and die by the resurrected Lord. I call your cells, your atoms, your cells. I call your heart. I call your lungs. I call your liver and mind. I curse infections of the body right now of our lives and of our family. Right now in the name of Jesus. I curse death, hell, and the grave. And I speak life. I speak life. You who want to backslide, I curse it right now. You who the devil has hold in bondage and break the chains. If you stretch up your hand by faith, the Lord said, I'm going to deliver you. On this resurrection day, I don't care what you've done. You're going to get out of that in adultery. You're going to get out of that immorality. You're going to get out of that sin. You're going to get out of that bitterness. You're going to get out of that unforgiveness. No stop. I bring the chain of sleeplessness of your life. I break the chain. I break the chain. I break it off the I break it off the I break it off the We touch it away. We touch it away. Receive your power. Hallelujah. Come on, let's pray. We command the fire of our lives. We command every power of darkness to die. We command every witch, all that first word. Yes, that's now. We command every assignment of hell to be broken and die. We command death, death, death. In the pronouncement of death, we get to the marriage, the family, the home, the ministry, our finances, our city, our nation. We break now. We command the Bible. The Bible comes to your house. The Bible comes to your home. The Bible comes to your spirit. The Bible comes to your destiny. Come and lift up your hands and receive it. Receive your deliverance. Receive your power. It's time to pray. What about your son? In Jesus' name. If this ministry has blessed your life, we thank you for joining us. Thank you, Apostle Jacob, for staying with us. Apostle Peter, Apostle Daniel, thank you for staying and being with us. We love you all so much. You know we love you. We're supporting you. And all those who are listening and watching our followers, our partners, we're praying for you. Partners, continue to stand with us. Hallelujah. I'm going to let you leave us. Just thank you all for a minute.
in these books, people's lives are being transformed. Uh, one can read this, these books and they can go out. Hallelujah. They don't have to mount any pulpit. God bless the Lord and thank God for those who are already mounting pulpit and preaching and teaching from this. But I can tell you if you feel like you are ordinary, hallelujah, in which there is no such thing as an ordinary person because you are extraordinary. You are peculiar. Hallelujah. You are peculiar people of holy nations. You are kings and priests. You are royal priests unto God. But I can tell you that these books will equip you for every form of ministry, reconciliation, the love to walk in the authority, hallelujah, that Christ has given you to experience heaven and earth, to experience the glory, the wealth of God, his person, hallelujah, his presence, the character, hallelujah, of Jesus, the image of Christ. You need to experience it, experience it and walk into it. Again, the kingdom, hallelujah, I'll put it up so that you can see uh, the kingdom, hallelujah, the power, hallelujah, and the glory. If you haven't received your books as yet, uh, feel free to reach out to us. As a matter of fact, as the Lord is leading me now, hallelujah, I just feel like I want to give away, hallelujah, five free books if you inbox us. The first five persons, hallelujah, to inbox us now, hallelujah, they will get a copy, hallelujah, you, uh, for a physical copy now, you will be restricted by your geographical location because you know, uh, especially because of the virus that shut down the coaches and so on, we're posting, it will uh, take some time and in some places it, it is impossible, but if you are in a location, we will respond and let you know the first five persons they will receive a book hallelujah for those of you who haven't received it as yet uh go to www.trilogykingdomtrilogy.com you will find all of the information that you will need about this book and you will be tremendously blessed and we just ask that you give god glory for us give god glory for the book and also just let us know that the book has been a blessing hallelujah to you just join the community of others who are being tremendously blessed whose lives has changed whose faith hallelujah has been uplifted there is one hallelujah for someone who uh, got the book Amen. Amen. Sick. hallelujah but the, the spirit of the lord just came hallelujah upon that person so powerfully that that person was transformed and i wouldn't even go into detail all i can say is the Lord move and the Lord is blessed and the Lord is well uh, pleased, hallelujah, by that person. And so we just go humbly, hallelujah, before you as servants of God, giving God all the praise and the glory again. Please like and share. Let us know we are being a blessing unto you. We give God all the praise and all, hallelujah, the power and the glory that he is so deserving of. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Enjoy the rest of your day. And walk in power, walk in victory, hallelujah, and do not just live, hallelujah, do not just barely exist, but live an abundant life and reign, hallelujah, in Christ today and forevermore, in Jesus' mighty name. God bless all of you. Thank you so much, Apostle Jacob, that everyone just raise, hallelujah, just give a wave to those who are watching. God bless you. Thank you, thank you. We love you until thank we you. meet again. May God the Lord, the Holy Spirit, and the power of God go with us. May our faith be increased. May our love be increased and shown. Hallelujah. Unto uh, those who are saved, those who are unsaved. May transformation take place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May persons who are in darkness come into light. May they receive the light. May they grow in truth. In Jesus' mighty name, God bless you and we love you. Until next time, thank you. Kingdom of Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Wonderful apostles who are joining us on this platform. They are our apostles, pastors, uh, five-four ministers from all over. Those who are not uh, here physically on this platform, they are watching. God bless all of you on behalf of us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.